Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Nigel with you, Nigel's Model Bench. And here we are now, week 22 of the uh, World War One Wednesday. So um, we'll have the camel in the first part of the video today, see how we get on, and if we've got enough time left, we'll have some of the armoured car as well. Unfortunately, with the armoured car, you're not going to see a lot of actual building with the fiddly bits, because I basically can't see what I'm doing. And I can't do what I can't see. I can't do what I can't see on camera. There you go. I, yeah. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe down there. Hit the like button. Give us a thumbs up. And if you don't like what you see, give us a thumbs down. I am literally filming this the evening. Well, not the evening. It's night time now. After filming section 21. And I was losing my rag and my shoulder was killing me and everything. I've had a bit of a rest and I'm okay now. Um, basically, the problem I have is... is it's okay if I can do stuff like this and have my arm on the bench and do some painting or some writing, whatever. It's absolutely fine. It's when I have to start doing this and picking things up and turning this, it gets, it hurts. So um, it is getting a lot better, I must be honest. But uh, yeah. Um, so I've still got this clamped up because the glue is drying around the cockpit floor and this um, mount here. And you can also see I've got some tape in there holding that down while the glue dries on there. So I'm sure it's glued dry by now. Um, what we're going to do today, we are going to fit this part here, which is our rudder pedals part, with that bracket for the rudder pedals, and we're going to um, glue that into position and then get all our control cables all nice and taut down at the back. You will also see here I've put a piece of easy line across the um, across the control column there, so it's not all flopping about, not going to get broken off. So what I want to do here is remove wherever the end is, where is the end of this tape? I should have done this before I put the camera on, shouldn't I? Where is the end of this tape? It would be, wouldn't it? It's right in the most awkward spot to get to. Right on the rear corner there. All right, so that's removed now and everything's all nice and rigid. So basically what we've got to do now is make sure we don't have anything twisted up. Now this is going to go in this way round the rudder pedals need to be the other way round, so they're going to be like that. Um, is anything twisted up? Oh boy, oh boy, yes it is. So yeah, we've got lots of, uh, we've got a right bird's nest going on here. Okay, I'm going to get this bird's nest sorted out, because you don't want to see me doing this, do you? And then I'll come back. and show you where we are. Here we go guys, this is about like an hour later. I've glued that in, um, all the cables and everything. It was just too much with the camera on. So that's glued in. I took this bulkhead out, as you know, and I've replaced it so it holds the front together. Because we've got those four nice big pins on there, which give it some support. So that's in there nice and solid. I've also, all the cables got all tangled up back here. So I've also separated them up. So we've got right rudder, left rudder, um, and then we've got the uh, control cables for the elevators here. So I've got the control cutters, control cables for the rudders. The elevators are here. Okay, so we've got one right and left, and they are port and starboard. And then the actual rudder cable cables are all down here in these bags. So what I've done, you just get these little bags. These are come with the hatchet Lancaster, and just just push them closed, and it holds the cables in the in the sort of in the neck at the top of the bag there. So that's all good. So now we can manipulate the model and not have everything all fall about. All the cables are all untangled. Everything is looking good. So um, you can see we've got our controls there. You can see me moving. When I move the yoke, you can see it moving the bags there. And if I move the rudder pedals here, it'll move those bags down there. So um, there we go. As you can see there, I pull the bags and they pull the rudder pedals. There we are. So um, yeah, all looking good. All lovely. So I'm going to have a break now and um, have a rest from it all because it's uh, my shoulders hurting again because I've been holding it up and doing these cables and da 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 da. And all that. I need to do something where I can just work here. I might, go, I might make a start on that Jad Lamp Spitfire actually. So uh, anyway, um, back in a second for you, probably a few days for me. Um, I'm going to leave that tape on. I'll leave that tape down. Um, we've got glue in all these joints now, so that's all good. I've put that. Um, whatever it is back in there. That was a bit of a nightmare. But uh, here we are. So that's all in nice and solid now. Everything's all nice and solid. And um, yeah, I'll bet, 
I'll bet one of you has suggested putting a piece of easy line across there before this video comes out. I'll bet you have. And uh, But today is the, what is it? It's the 1st. It's the 1st of October 2024, the day before part 21 went out, and this is part 22. So yeah, I mean, you can see here, she's looking bloody gorgeous. Really is looking gorgeous. It's worth, it's worth the time taken. This is one of those models that you know, it really does reward all the time taken on all that little detail bit of painting. And I'm really pleased with the work I've done at that control column by drilling it out and putting the, um, the model Caston uh, rigging around there to, uh, to simulate the string. So, and also I'm glad I painted all these bits and pieces black rather than silver. I think it looks so much better. So what we've got to do now is go in and paint all these little bits here black, these little brackets. So, uh, so it all matches. Right. I will be back sometime. <laughs> Bye for now. And we're back. This is uh, a few days later now. And as you can see, if you look in this cockpit, we are starting to look really nice. I've gone round, I've painted all these brackets black where the string's going to go through, and then I've drilled them all out with a 0.6 drill. They're all going to have to be touched in anyway. So um, I may actually go over the lines with some black wash just to, just to darken them up a bit. We shall see. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this is looking. It's, it's coming out a lot better than I expected to. Um, it's a beautiful model and it's really worth taking the time. Um, I think I showed you that already. I've done the, uh, the string on there, the, uh, the rubber for the uh, suspension for the tail skid. So um, looking in the instructions, we need to look at what's next. And we haven't done the engine yet. So we basically just finished step five. So they're asking us now to move on to step six and step seven. Well, we've already done step seven um, and we've done all this. We've got that tube to fit in there, but I'm going to leave that out until all the rigging is done because it's going to make it much, well, the control lines, it's going to make it much easier to get in there. And for the same reason, I'm going to leave the instrument panel and these two parts out because next over, you can see, we're actually building up the tailplane and the rudder and then we have to rig it all up. My thinking is, I think um, Hasegawa have missed the, missed the plot here. Um, without all that in there, we've got all this access because these lines are designed to be adjusted where they, where they go through the control column here. You can slide them forward and, and sort of, you know, bring everything forward and back and everything, get it all evened up. But you can imagine with an instrument panel, those two brackets, the, um, the oil tank and everything, it's all going to get in the way. So... You know, I just think it'll be, I mean, the oil tank's not going to get in the way because it's up here. But I just think it's going to be better to leave all this as it is so we can get in there, get everything all connected. Because all of this basically goes to the tailplane and the rudder. Um, the only two that aren't going to the tailplane and the rudder, these two here, which are tucked in these bags. And they're going out to the ailerons, I believe. Well, well I know they are because they're connected to the control column. Where else would they go? So... Um, I'm going to, I've already glued this together. That's in the box. To, so we have seams to deal with. Um, but again, if I put that in, it's going to take up space, I think. So what I'm going to do is go straight over here to the, to the tail planes. So this is something that Hasegawa have done that, you know, I wish they'd do the same as Airfix. You know, with an Airfix kit these days, you know, Sprue B has all your cockpit parts, uh, you know, with the modern kits. Um, it's like with their 124th Hellcat. All of the left wing is on one sprue, all of the right wing is on another. So that sort of thing. It's, it's, it's wonderful how it works out. This, well, we've got B, C, L, D, um, E. <laughs> so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different sprues just to do this. So it's it's crazy. And they're showing here to keep the glue off of there, which as you know from my experience with the tail wheel, I'm not very good at. So um, coming down in here, we've got these small sprues here. So I'm not going to take anything off of them just yet because they're for the little brackets and stuff. What I want to do is get the major parts off. So we can see here that we've got the, the actual tail plane, or if you're American, the stabilizer itself. Um, and what we've got here is D3. This is sprue D. So we've got D3. We've got six of them. So you can see there's three on there and then there's three on there. And that one is unfortunately broken and that one is distorted. So we'll have to do a little bit of a repair job on those. 
So we'll get these off the sprue. I'm going to cut in nice and close to the sprue if I can to minimise the cleanup. As you can see, that one there is broken in half and that one there is distorted. That's no problem. We can deal with that. We're modellers. That's what it's all about. So that can go back in there. And then these here are all good. It's, it's, I'm amazed there's not more jab damage on here because all of these sprues were individually bagged. And this model's been, you know, halfway around the world. So, uh, yeah, amazing. Right, so that's cleaned out. Just had the news on and there's some Labour guy, Hamish Falconer, being interviewed talking about Keir Starmer and the moving of Sue Gray. And, you know, the most interesting part of that conversation is a guy walked past, and they're, they're down in Westminster on College Green, and there's a guy walked past with two beautiful schnauzers. How interesting. Right, so... Um, these parts here are off and as you can see we've got this one here is broken so what we'll do is we'll repair that when it goes on we've also got ejector pin marks in the side of these parts which I've just noticed I'm not sure if they're going to sand out are they shallow enough to sand out or do they need filling they're shallow enough to sand out luckily so we'll go on and get those sanded out or shall I do in fact I'll do it when it's actually on the model because we're going to have seams to fill in here to get rid of the gap in the wood so um, we'll go on and fit these so I'll fit a good one first so basically we've got I'm not sure which way round these are okay this it's obvious which way around they go they've got a leading edge and a trailing edge so that's going to sit in there like that so we've got the leading edge has this sort of step in it, this corner cut out there. So that's going to go in the front. And then that's going to sit out. As you can see, we've got gaps here on the surface and we've got gaps in the side that we're going to have to give the super glue treatment to. So uh, there we go. So I'm going to put some cement in there. That should hold it in place. No, it doesn't. Is this plastic going to play up with the extra thin as well? Tell you what, I'm going to use the EMA, which is a far better cement than Tamiya Extra Thin. I'm really going off Tamiya Extra Thin lately. It's um, it's almost like it's changed its formula or something. As some of you will have seen, I've already done a video about using this stuff. And um, it does appear to be a lot better. I'm not sure if it's because of the green stuff and all that and our manufacturers changing their plastic blends. I, I, I don't know, but for some reason it's becoming more and more frequent that we're having issues. I mean, it used to be like years ago, a Tacom kit that I had. It was a truck and it was like that yellow mustard plastic and I just wore it would not go together. I, I think in the end I binned it. In fact, I must have done because I haven't still got it. Um, that was a complete nightmare. Um, I built a kit many years ago, which was, I think it was a company called Mini Hobby. It's one of these um, Tamiya ripoffs. It even had two stars on the box. Um, and it was a big aircraft carrier. No, it wasn't. It was Bismarck, sorry. It was a ripoff of the 1350 Bismarck from Tamiya. And... It even had two stars in the logo. Maybe it wasn't Mini Hobby. And um, it was like nylon. Couldn't even glue it with super glue. Nothing would stick it. Nothing. It's really weird. I wonder why it was so cheap. There we go. Right. So I'm going to go on and glue the rest in. I'll just show you this bent one. So what we'll do is we'll bend that back now. Okay, so that's gone back. And then we can put that into there like so. Get a drop of cement into that end. Pinch that down. We've also got ejector pin marks in the surface here that have got to be filled. 
So um, it's going to be quite a lot of work going into this tailplane that I'll probably end up having to do off camera, which is a real shame because the trouble is the more work I have to do off camera, the less footage I'm making and the more time I'm spending at the bench not filming other stuff. So it's getting to the point now where I'm sort of spending hours and hours at the bench doing just making Pocker Saturday, um, Stuka Sunday and Wingnut Wings Wednesday and I'm not getting anything else done. So here we are, there's my life in a in a few seconds. <laughs> so right this is So which is the broken end? That's the broken end, the thicker end. So that's going to go into there. So luckily it snapped off after that first leg. So that can go like that. And then this broken piece at the back, I'm just going to put some cement in there and on there. And then hopefully, hopefully be the operative word. Just use the tweezers to pull it all together parallel. And then we can put a drop of cement in there, drop in there, and a drop in there. Again, this is all going to be sanded and messed with and everything. There we go. So the rest we got now are complete. So they can just drop in there. Just like so. Let that go off and then put this inner one here. So that one can go in there. Whoops, flicking it around the place. So that one can go in there. So now we've got. You might be thinking this is a bit of a pain having to do with all these seams, but. If you look at the design of the part, it's really the only way they could mould it and retain the detail, you know, the holes through the ribs. So this one here will be gelling off so we can get that one squared up, pinched down, and then get this one squared up, pinch it down, let any glue ooze out or whatever. And there we are, so that's our that's our tailplane completed with all our ribs in it, or stabiliser. And uh, so now we've got ejector pin marks to fill, we've got these joints here to fill, we've got sanding to do and all sorts. So that is actually going to fit on the back of the fuselage, like so. I'm not sure how well it's going to fit. Because we've got loads of paint and stuff on there, but yeah, it's gone on. Yeah, sat there in the holes so all those lines are going to come back and control the elevator and everything so all good all lovely right so we're going to let that dry out and then we'll come in and clean it all up i think what we'll do is probably let it tack off a bit we'll come in with some super glue fill in the gaps let that all go off and then get some sand in done and then we're back to doing woodwork again see you in a minute all right so i have these parts as you know assembled now that's all good and i've got the elevator off now i have some concerns here um if we look at real photographs we can see here that the the actual elevator and the fin and rudder are manufactured from a metal i'm not sure if it's aluminium or steel um but and if i put a photograph up now a beautifully done model which is they bought my model this is actually the Hasegawa 18 scale model and you can see you've got the the metal framing here around the end of the um 
stabilizer and also the complete framing of the elevator is all uh, metal as well and you can see on the kit we've got we've got a nice round metal part here which is great we've got a nice round metal part there which is great but the ends I mean they've actually thickened the ends up here rather than thin them down so um, I think what I might do is do, do a little bit of modification just to see if I can improve things and make it look a bit better more like a tube so what I'm going to do is just gently scrape here in fact I think what I'm going to do is I may just sand away the outside um, on both of them because you can see we've got the same thick part around here so what I may do is just sand away the outside to get them to blend um, because it'll be a lot easier to remove material from the outside than the inside here it's going to have to come from the inside so that it blends with that um, with that leading edge now the leading edge up to this point it appears was wood so um, yeah it's a bit uh, it's a bit weird anyway I'll, uh, I'll carry on with this and then I'll show you what it looks like. I mean, you can see how I'm doing it for the newer modelers out there. I'm just basically paring away the plastic, thinning out this inner area to get it to match the thickness of this leading edge here. Just like so. There we go. That's that's looking a lot better already. Now I think what I'll do for the for the rest of it, I think I'll sand the outside edge down, get it thinner, and then we'll concentrate on rounding it up so it's sort of the same diameter as this. It's still going to be. I don't want to thin it out so that it's accurately as thick as the real thing because it'll be so weak, it'll just break because it's um it's very thin tubing. But you can see now that looks so much better there with that end dealt with like that and then we can come in with a it's too narrow for a glass file but I can come in with a 400 grit stick in fact it's the perfect width for that and just sand that corner to get it nice and square and then I'll just do the same on this end blend it all in and see how it looks and then what we'll do is we'll paint this um, we'll paint this the steel or aluminium whatever it is in black and the rest of it will be wood grain so yeah, it's all good. Right, back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. I've been sat here sanding this and I'm looking at it and I just don't like it. Uh, when you look at the real thing and you look at this, it just doesn't look right. Um, so what I've decided to do is replace it with one millimeter brass. And remember, this is one sixteenth, one sixteenth, one sixteenth scale. So that means that if I use one millimeter brass, It'll be 16 times bigger, so that'd be 16 millimeters, which is like five eighths. So that's probably pretty close to what they would have used. And I'm looking at this, and it looks, it kind of looks right. I just want to tighten that up a touch, actually. <clears throat> it kind of looks right. Looking at the, the the model, I'll put an image up again. It just looks, it just looks right. Yeah. Um, I need to tighten that up some more. <clears throat> what I've done, I've bent this around a knife, a large exacto handle. Just tighten that up, and then this one here, I'm going to make it exactly the same. So what we can do is hold these together, and then yeah, this one here needs to be tightened up. And at the end of the day, what we're going to end up with here is something a lot more rigid, round. And it's just going to look so much better. Um, so basically what we need to do now is get these fitted. So I think what I'm going to do is come along and cut this away here. And I'm going to cut this away here. All right. And as you can see, I've left, I've left some meat on there. So what I'm going to do is just sand that so I can just see that 
leading edge part exposed and then it should be easy to come in and find the center. Now I'm going to have to do this off camera. What I'm going to do is pin the center and then drill it, drill it one mil and then what I'll do is move the drill out so that I can get the brass to go in right up to the leading edge so it's nice and flush. There is actually a join there but um, I'm going to try and have it so it's just like a painted joint. Now this piece of spar here, this is actually metallic, uh, sorry wooden, so um, that's fine. So what we can do here is we can, on the end here, where's my sanding stick, we can sand that flat there. Okay, and then what we can do is find the center of that and drill it. And then once it's drilled, we can blend it all in. It's going to be super glue and everything. So we're going to make it look like it's welded there because that's actually, let's just call it steel. This is steel, so it's going to be steel all around to there. Okay, so now instead of that great big lump of plastic, what we're going to have is something like that. Okay, and that's just going to look so much better on the finished model. It's just going to look awesome. So what, what we'll do is we'll draw this hole first and then we'll basically carve this away, this one here, until we can slide it down and get it to slot into that hole there. So we're going to drill a hole in there, I drill a hole in there. I'm going to start with 0.8 and then I'll go out to one millimeter. So I'll be back in a second when I've done that. And there we go. You can see here, get this light a bit better. You can see here, I've drilled these out and we've gone so close to the edge, we've actually broken through, which is cool. And then what we can do is fit this piece of brass and slide it through there and into the bottom one. Go on, go on, slide it through there. That's popped out the top one there. Go on, go through there. Right, there we go. So that's gone in there. And then as you can see, we can trim this to length. So we've got a one mil hole in there in the end. We can trim that to length and glue that in. We can glue this in and trim this end off and then sand it all and blend it round. So the first thing I've got to do is um, rough up the uh, the brass. Let's, let me get a marker. So what I'm going to do is rough up there, there and there, and there and there. Okay, so I'm just going to go in with a nice coarse sanding stick and just rough up the brass so we get a good bond with the super glue. This is probably going to be quite fragile. Okay, so that's that done. So now we need to get this in position. In position. I haven't come round the side enough, have I? There we go. Right. So we're going to get this in position. I don't think we're going to get any armoured car in this video now, guys, because this is going to take us into the um, into the hour, I think, or even more. But I'm sure you will want to see this. I'm sure that some of you that are building this will want to do this as well. Okay, so we can see now that we've got that there. So what I'm going to do is grab a little scrap of masking tape I've got here on the left of me. And what I'm going to do is use the masking tape to mark where I want to chop this off. So I'm going to chop it off there. Just double check. Yeah, it's slightly too long. Okay, so I'm going to chop it off there. I'm going to make sure I cut it this way because we'll get a nice flat end then. Whenever you cut with snips like this, you end up with a you can see this is a nice flat end. That's a nice flat end. Whereas when you look at this end, I don't know if you can see the difference, you end up with a like a big V on there. Yeah. So we always cut if you're cutting to finish, you always cut to this side. Right. So that can slide in there. That can slide into there, and then we can see. We've got too much length on there, so what I'm going to do 
I could have done this initially. Trust me to hit a blunt part of the cutter. There we go. So we can cut that off. So that should now pop in there. No, it's still too long. It's not enough to cut. I'm going to have to sand it. So I'll come in with a sanding stick. This is a case of trial and fit, guys. <clears throat> test it, fit it, test it, fit it. Test it 20 times and glue it once. So that's looking pretty good. So there you go. There's our brass end on our, on our tailplane. So I'm happy with that. That's all looking good. So what we can do is glue this in, make sure it's all nice and got plenty on there and then leave it overnight and then sand it all back when the glue's good and hard. I think what I'm going to do is trim this off now because I think maybe if I trim it off when it's glued, the shock may break the joint. So there we go. That's one end done. Um, that's looking cool. Much better than the plastic. So there we are. So I'm going to get on and do the other side and then we'll come back and see how she looks when she's all done. Okay, there we go. So there's both sides done now. This is the uh, this is the top we're looking at here. So you can see nice thin brass ends on there, so much better than the plastic. And then when we mate up the um, there we go. When we mate up the elevator, elevators, you can see the difference in the thick, chunky plastic and the brass rod. So uh, what we've got to do now is make these two here. So what I'm going to do is take my piece of brass rod. Now I've got a piece of, um, this is, I think it's inch bore, isn't it? Is it inch bore? No, it's 22 mil bore, but it's about 26 mil OD. And that is a perfect radius for the outside there. And then I've got this Tamiya paint marker, which is a perfect radius for there. So what I'm going to do is start on the outside. So basically, if I know I'll start on the inside, it'll be easier to control the length. So I'm going to leave a bit of excess on there. So basically the middle, middle of the radius is going to be roughly there. So what we'll do is we'll start a bend there and then we'll bend some there. Okay, now this is obviously all just doing it by eye, so it needs a bit more. So I'm doing it all by eye, and then the second one will be made to match the first, and then the first will be tweaked to match the second, and so on, so we get them both the same. Um, so that's pretty good. A little bit too tight so we'll just flex that out slightly you can see that's gone way too far so we'll bring this back in again and just give it a tweak it seems to undo itself a lot easier than it does itself up so there you can see that's pretty much that's pretty much spot on and that's got that one there. Now this one here, this is going to be the problem. We need our radius to start where my thumb is. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm only going to bend. I need to make sure that's in the right place. I'm only going to bend from here. So I'm going to start the bend. And I'm not going to even attempt to finish the bend I'm just starting it to check that I've got the radius starting in the same now the radius needs to come back a bit so we can come back here hold that make sure it's square pull it around a bit okay so that radius could still do with starting a bit earlier just a tad 
So we'll hold that there, pull that back, and then I'm going to pull that one round. But I think we need to find something smaller because it needs to be over bent, it looks like. What we could do is anneal it, but then it will be all really floppy and everything. So what I need is something smaller to bend it around. And what I'm looking at here is a Mr. Hobby glue bottle. So if we get all that out of the way and put this here, hold that there and pull that round. That could be better. Okay, so the radius needs to start a touch earlier, so we'll put it on there, hold it, and then we'll pull that around, get the radius to start earlier. Hopefully you're learning something from this. There are ways you can measure for the correct bends and everything, finding the centre of the bend and then mark the tube and everything. It's all about bend radii. Um, now you can see this radius on here is not exactly matching the plastic. I'm not worried about that as long as it matches each side, okay? So that needs to come around a bit tighter there. So we're going to pull that round a bit tighter. Okay, pull it a bit more. here you can see now we're really starting to get somewhere and then I'm just going to pull it a touch more and then we'll know where we want the straight part to start there we go so now the straight part I want to start here I think we're about there. I'm basically laying over the centre of the plastic. Okay, I'm going to tighten that up a bit more. Straighten that out a touch. You can see there we've got the radius. The radius is slightly out. The radius is slightly too big. We could easily make it smaller. Um, but I'm happy with the end position. Um, I'm kind of wondering if I can actually bend that a bit smaller on there. I don't think I can. We need something even smaller, I think. Because it's got so much spring back. You can see now it's the radius is starting slightly too early. Let's try it on here. I wonder if that'll be better. I don't care if we scrap a piece of brass, it doesn't matter, it's just learning how it reacts. Well, we're not scrapping it, we'll put it back in the box and we can use this for short lengths for doing grab handles and stuff like that. But, um, just manipulating the brass. Go where I want it to go. Okay, so that's straightened out now. As you can see, it's a bit too wide, so we'll tighten that radius up there, slacken that radius off there. I think we're nearly there. There we go. That's pretty much it. Now I've just got to make another one the same now, and that is not going to be easy. I'm also a bit concerned. I've been bending this about so much. Is that trailing edge still straight? It should be. It is. It's pretty much straight. 
But there we go. There you are, we can see we've got the brass on there now. It's all good. So we'll do the same for the other side, pull it all around. That's going to take me a while, I'll probably end up making about three or four to match that. I also need to make sure it's flat. So we'll just twist it around a bit. Get it so it sits straight. Right, back in a minute when I've done some more work. And as if by magic, there we go. Um, got them all glued in, obviously all the drilling's done and everything. And you can see here we have the, the tailplane itself. We have the elevators here. They're not actually glued together. And I've just placed them like that so you can see them. And you can see they're absolutely covered in black dots. And that's where there are ejector pin marks. So this model does, uh, does have quite a few ejector pin marks on it. These black dots you can see here, there's a black super glue. And I'm just um, filling in the seams where those little fillets went in to make up the ribs. But um, I think you'll agree. I mean, I can zoom you in a bit more. I think you'll agree that is uh, that is far better than those great big lumps of plastic and everything. And as you can see, you know, when you look at them in profile, they're uh, they're really nice. The black you can see here, um, that is because the I, I drilled through and obviously went slightly off center. So this rib has been slightly pulled that way. So I'm just building up one side um, to. Uh, to get them even they're actually I believe I think they're like L section um, well I think they're probably steel uh, or, or I don't think it's aluminium I think this is all probably steel but um yeah this the, the whole tailplane the whole elevator is is metal and the whole um, tailplane is wood except for these ends here which are metal so uh, so there we go but um, yeah getting these shapes the same on either side was a bit tricky but we got there in the end and um, I think it's going to look great and then when you've got the fin in the middle separating it if there is any small difference it won't show but um just going to leave that now for a good I don't know eight hours let the glue go solid remember with this stuff uh, with this VMS um, if you like for instance I can see here I can see here I've got a bit of shrinkage I'm just going to get some more glue and put it in. Now, if I do this after the eight hours, remember that when you put the new glue on, it's going to soften all the old glue that's already there. So you sort of have to start your eight hours again, even though you've only put a tiny drop on, um, because that's that's what it does. It dissolves the old glue. So uh, bear that in mind when you're um, when you're doing it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's worth taking the time. And as I said before, I don't know if it was this video I mentioned it or the previous one. Um, you know, this model, if you're going to get one and build it, have it on the side and, and pick it up now and again. Because, you know, I mean, everything I've done on here, all the wood painting, all the super gluing, this making all this frame, everything takes time and everything needs time to dry. So um, it's good to just, uh, you know, just have it on the side and then you can be getting on with something else. I mean, I've got two other kits here or three other kits actually on my left here that I'm working on. In fact, including the Porsche, I've got four. So, um, yeah, um, I'm just sort of working in between the two. And as I said earlier, I'm bloody, I just seem to be making video, making, doing work to make videos these days. And it's, uh, it's get it's wearing a bit thin, to be honest. So, um, I might have to have a break. We might miss a week of uh, Stuka Sunday, Winglet Wings Wednesday, Porsche, whatever. Okay, so um, I guess now we'll just put this to one side and I suppose we could do a little bit on the armoured car and then I'll come back. All right, so we're back with the armoured car. This is the Austin armoured car from um, Midiart. It's the uh, Austin armoured car, third series, Ukrainian, Polish, Georgian, Romanian service. Kit number 39005. I noticed uh, Hannah and Shukai have got this kit on sale at the moment, so have a look in the mini art special offers and uh, you'll see it there. So if you remember last time we finished, we built the engine, we added some plug leads and then we were talking about these two sort of subframe units and we brought up the main transmission. We've got to add these bits to the back of it. And then what we're asking you to do is add the engine in between those chassis rails, add the flywheel and everything and the clutch by the look of it. And then um, exhaust pipe. And then you're going to go on to doing the Radiator fitting the transmission, fitting all that into there, and then we've got lots of PE bits and pieces that are just asking to get snapped off. So we'll have to look at the build sequence for them. Um, and then we're adding the radiator, and then we've got this. Uh, I don't know, is that a clutch unit there? Is it? 
I'm not sure, maybe that's a clutch unit on the back or I don't know. Um, and then here we're going to add the exhaust. Well, I'm going to make the exhaust up now. Here's the exhaust here and add it to that subframe before we actually fit it to the chassis. Now you're looking at this, you can see it all fitted. I haven't jumped ahead. Um, all I've done, the engine is just placed on top of the sump. And what I've done is glued the sump into those pair of rails there. Okay, so simple as that, that's really easy. Um, so that's all done. I got these, I got my two steel blocks out and just pressed up against them to make sure they're nice and square. But that all goes in there and fits beautifully. It is extremely fiddly. And as you can see, there are many, many tiny little parts to go on. And as I say, we're gonna have to look at this because if you look here, um, they're asking us to fit, you know, this lever to the side of the transmission. We've got these little bits going on here. And we've got some photo etched parts that are gonna stick out on the bottom. And then we're going to be turning it all over and adding leaf springs. Well, if you turn it all over with all that on, it's all going to get snapped off, which is why I haven't fit the steering column. So, you know, consider what you're doing before you uh, just start gluing stuff together. But I think for now, what we'll do is we'll get this. Um, I'm going to be darting around all over this manual, guys. I'm sorry, but the build sequence is just not um, not good. I'm sorry. So we have DA36, DA31 and DA9. Um, was this DA or was this B? That was B. I think this little one here was DA, wasn't it? Notice I got them wrapped up so they don't all get damaged. Oops. Um, this one here is DA, yes. So we've got DA36, which is here. That's 38. 36 is here. You sort of look on the manual, you think, oh, it was a big old part, and then you get to it and it's actually tiny. So there's that one, and then we've got DA9, which is going to be up along here somewhere, DA9. It's a little bit flashy, this sprue, actually. Um, and then DA31. 31. There's 31 there on the end. Yeah, it's a little bit flashy and a little bit sort of chunky, especially for mini art. So um, we'll get these cleaned up and go from there. Um, it's hard to know what's bloody sprue getting what's detail is so detailed there's so much on here these kits are just amazing but um they do require they do require some special uh, special attention and a lot of patience as I say you know where most manufacturers would make a molding Mini art break that down into 15 parts. I mean, yeah, I'm exaggerating, but they may well break it down into five. It's uh, sometimes you sort of scratch your head thinking, why have they done that? I'm going to have to do a set of the magnifier because I can't see where the sprue gate ends and the part stops. I hate that when they do that. When the sprue gate is the same size as the pin, you can see what you're supposed to end up with. It's, you know, the, the sprue gate is just the same size as the pin, so you don't know what to do. It's like a short run thing. All right, so I'll get these cleaned up. And then basically this is going to glue like... Like that. That is going to go onto there. So you've got a pin and a tab. That's going to go in there like that. Yeah. And then that's going to go in there. We've got a tiny little lever on the side. See you in a second. Okay, so I've made a decision. I got this exhaust glued together and I fitted it to this little subframe here. Um, I've made a decision. I'm going to glue all this together, paint it all, and then um, brush paint all the detail and everything. Because painting all this and then gluing it all together is just going to be too messy. So the first thing I'm going to do is put couple of drops of cement on here around those pins and then we can drop the engine on and that should hold the engine in position and I can just put a drop of cement in there and let it capillary in and then we do the same on the front being careful not to put too much pressure on the engine parts so that's gone down like that 
and then this exhaust pipe or the down pipe should I see where it goes into the silencer or the muffler that's going to go into there get plenty of cement on there because we're going to be covered all in rust anyway there we go so that's that in place it all fits beautifully um, and then here we've got this uh, this sort of flywheel clutch cover, whatever it is. That's going to slide over the pin on the back of the engine. I hope. Okay, we probably should have fitted that to the engine first. Just like most of the stuff on here, it's a really tight fit. So I'm going to grab my calipers and measure the diameter of that pin. That's 1.4, and this hole is also 1.4, so it may just be a bit of flash. So we just get in there with a knife to see if that's made a difference. It's all about guys not forcing it, just push that down pipe out of the way now. Yeah, if you're building one of these, I recommend fitting that to the engine before you drop it onto these chassis rails because the down pipe gets in the way and the actual little lugs get in the way as well. There we go. So that's going to sit in two little lugs some cement in there and we'll get some cement in there and then we've got this ring here let's get some more because it's going to dry out otherwise and that is going to go on there quite why it's keyed I do not know but it is It looks like it uh, forms one big flywheel. Ed Miliband's favourite thing at the moment. <laughs> Just looking at it, it's got teeth on the edge of it there for the starter motor by the look of it. I'm guessing the starter motor must be up in that housing there. So we'll make sure that's all nice and square. So we can grab our pencil, that's gone. That's gone, that's gone. Okay, and they're gone as well. We've also done those, and we've also assembled that. This unit here, I've assembled that up. So now, um, the next thing is fit the transmission. So the transmission is going to sit on the top of the chassis or the subframe. So it's going to go that way up. Something's missing here. You can see on here they're showing this piece across the top which is this piece here, so we haven't fitted it yet, so they've got it a bit confused in their CAD modelling. Right, so it's going to go that way up with the long shaft facing forward. That's going to go in the back of the flywheel or whatever it is. Something feels wrong here. does sit on top of the chassis. Duh. I had it upside down. But now lo and behold that pin doesn't fit in that hole there. So this pin is 
1.3. Okay, I'll get a 1.3 drill. And just gently give that a tweak. Nope, still doesn't want to go in, so we'll go 1.4. I'm finding this a lot with this kit. I'm finding a lot of pins that are too big for their holes. It could just be flash, but uh, who knows? There we go, it's gone in there. And then that transmission and sit top of that chassis. Now I'm going to pull that around slightly. Because I want this chassis, to, this transmission to sit nice and square. Now the other thing we've got to make sure of, of course, is this chassis, as you can see, or this subframe, can spread. So what we're going to do We need to make sure that we don't spread it around. So I'm just going to glue it on one side. And I'll glue that pin into there. I'm going to leave the other side. And that way, when we fit it to the chassis, well, we can get let this dry and then dry fit it to the chassis because these legs here go into these two holes in this cross member here and here. So if we distort it and have them pulled apart, then it's going to mess things up. The other thing you could do is measure to the outside edges of that chassis. See how that compares with those holes. Perfect. So let's get some cement on there and let it dry. It does look like that one has to be just squeezed down in between those two ribs. And there we go. So I'm just going to quickly do a test fit. Wow, this is all a bit tight. But it will go in, I'm sure. Um, we have this pin on the back of the transmission here. It has to go into this hole here. And these two legs have to sit into that front channel. So you can't sort of put the the back in and then slide the forward. The front has to go in first. The front has two tiny little holes it goes into. What I'm going to do is shave some meat off of this pin and make it into a kind of taper. That should help it to go in a bit better. Okay, so we get the front lined. Yep, the front's aligned. And we can push that transmission down into that hole. And we want these two chassis legs here 
to go into their holes. There we go, they've gone in. Transmission is down, everything is hunky dory. So I'm going to put one more drop of cement on here, making sure I don't glue the whole thing to the to the main chassis or main frame. And there we go. So that my friends is that. So I'm gonna let that dry. Kind of looks like it's off to one side, doesn't it? Kind of looks like it's pushing the... Yeah, that pin hasn't gone in the hole. Let me get this adjusted and then I'll come back. All right, there we go. I think this is why so many people get scared of mini art and sort of run them down and this, that and the other. I mean, it's a beautiful little assembly and it's true to scale and it's really, really gorgeous and lovely and all these brackets are going to go in. It's going to look amazing. But when it physically comes to fitting into the chassis, which we know is great and it's all nice and square and everything, it's extremely difficult. So, um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to put it in there and let all these mountings dry with it in situ. But the trouble is when you put it in situ, all the mountings just want to spring off. So what I'm going to have to do is, is let it dry like this, let it go hard and then... Um, I just leave it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave it for a few hours, let it go hard, and then I will come back. Uh, but you know, th this is, as I say, this is a, this is part of the pain in the ass with mini art. Is um, is is the fact they are so beautifully detailed. Their their biggest their biggest positive is their also their biggest negative. So um, I enjoy them. I, I really do enjoy them, especially the smaller kits like this. When you get the, the tanks and all the full interiors and everything, it's a bit much. And it really is. It just goes on and on and on. But um, it'd be interesting to see how this one comes out. But uh, yeah, we shall persevere. So um, we've got the engine into the subframe. We've got the transmission in and fitted the clutch and fly with the exhaust and everything like that. So we'll just let all that dry now. In fact, I won't have that lid on because it'll just it won't, it won't dry off properly. Um, so yeah, we'll let that dry off and then um, we'll, we'll give it a go next week at fitting it actually into the chassis. I will also come back and have a look at our um, tail planes, which are over here. They've been sat for a couple of hours now. So uh, they're still, I can see they're still quite glossy, so they're probably still quite wet. I may go in and add some more because I can see the gaps coming through where the seams are um, and then go from there. Uh, yeah, this this little sock with camel is proving to be a right little handful, but it's well worth it. The results are just, I think the results are well worth it. You can see there once we've got it all held together, it's all going to work and everything. So yeah, really really fun, really fun build that is. Not easy by any stretch of the imagination, and. Uh, you know, if you've got any hair left, you will probably pull some out. But um, there we go. So I'm going to call it a day for there, guys. Um, that's this week. That's week 22, isn't it? Um, I'll see you back hopefully next Wednesday, week 23. As I say, if it all gets a bit much, I'm just going to miss a week out. I'll have like a week off of the of the um, World War One Wednesday um, and see where we go from there. I, I now need to get on with next week's Stuka build. Uh, but before that, I need to get on with next week's Pocker Porsche build. So as you can see, it's kind of just a solid schedule and I'm not getting anything else done. So anyway, I keep bloody moaning. I'm sorry about that. I don't wish to moan all the bloody time. But, um, and like, like you guys, you're so lovely. A lot of you just say, you know, um, don't worry about it. We'll be here. Just miss a week. Come back. Do in a, do in a middle of the week, whatever. You don't really worry. Some of you want to know where everything else is, but uh, not all of you. So I'll see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your understanding. Thanks for listening. And as I say, one day in the near future, all this will become completely, perfectly clear as to what I'm talking about. So I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.